This episode of the Grand Rising Show was brought to you by A Toxinous Assembly, where the real work is done. A Toxinous Assembly is a gathering of the minds that do the work. Now, for many of our first time subscribers and first time visitors, you may be wondering who A Toxinous Assembly are. You can find this information about our mission statement and our core values on the website at toxinousassembly.com forward slash about. We are a nonprofit organization dedicated to raising up indigenous American voices by using genealogy, also known as family history or your family tree, which is the study of families and the tracing of their lineages and history. Genealogists use oral interviews, historical records, genetic analysis, and other records to obtain information about a family and to demonstrate kinship and pedigrees of its members. Our core values are the foundation of our company, which is essential to our success and serve as a lens through which we evaluate every business decision. Those core values are, but are not limited to, integrity, which is knowing and doing what is right, respect, which is treating others the way you want to be treated, responsibility, which is embracing opportunities to contribute, and servant leadership, which is serving the common good. Now, at Atoxinous Assembly, we have a couple of goals here. And our first goal and foremost of the reason why we do everything that we do is to ensure that we help you do your genealogy and connect back to your tribe and find out where you are from. Everything that we do from the standpoint of the Grand Rising show and all the information that's posted on the website is dedicated to that one specific purpose, helping you find your genealogy, find your relatives, find your family so that you will know exactly who you are. And if you choose to, tie back into your tribe, whether that tribe is a Native American tribe, an American Indian tribe, whether it's allowing you to determine which house in Africa that you belong to, or what clan of Scandinavia or Europe or France that you belong to. Either way, our goal is to do just that, help you find out who you are so you know exactly where to start. We are not here to tell you who you are, and we're not here to tell you who you are not. We're just here to help you discover your, your beginnings. Another one of our missions is to help you become financially independent so that you can help your generations for the next seven generations and be able to put a stable foundation for you and your relatives. And if you should choose to use this information that we provide free of charge to help not only yourself, but your community and your tribe, then we will do everything in our power to make sure that gets done as well. And remember, our goal here is to make sure that we help you get exposed to this information to put you in the best situation possible. So now what I'm going to do now is return it back over to the panel to see if there was anything I missed. And I will go ahead and get set up so we can now uh, get ready and get digging into this information. Panel, take it away. Warning, warning. Warning, hard hats, pickaxe, shovels, boots, required.
the real work is done. A Takhnas assembly is a gathering of the minds that do the work. Now for many of our first time subscribers and first time visitors. <laughs> grand rising, grand rising. Hope everyone's doing well this rising. Hope everyone's hey, doing hey, well. Hey. This Friday rising. Peace everybody. It's Friday. Hope y'all having a grand rise. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Already, here we go. Now, do me a favor for those of you that are in the chat. Um, can you give me some ones to make sure that um you can hear us? Because for whatever reason, um the music is not playing in the background, and I do not know why. Okay, thanks, Free. Appreciate you. Got one from Free. They keep telling some. There he is. David Corey gave up some ones. All right, cool. Two, two, one, two. All right, cool. Now. Can y'all hear the can y'all hear the music playing? Give me a one if you can hear the, hear the music playing. Give me a two if you cannot hear the music playing. Uh oh. Uh oh. Mm mm. Mm mm. Hmm, no music. Mm. Yeah, two uh oh. Two uh oh. I'm gonna say that's twenty two twos. That's twenty two twos. Twenty two. Twenty two. Twenty two twos. <sighs> okay, no worries. So I'm gonna be working in the background and get this uh, music going. Um, hopefully, we'll uh, we'll be able to get it planned. Um, if not, we're just gonna have to have to work around it. Rise, everybody's Friday rising so far. Same as yesterday's Friday rising. Grand. You do realize yesterday was not yesterday Friday. Yesterday was Sir Friday. Yesterday was Sir Friday. Today is Friday. Sir Friday. 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 <laughs> Friday Thank you, Cliff. We're going to change the days of the week. So it's what? I'm a Friday, two Fridays, <laughs> we're Friday, Sir Friday, and Friday. David, David, Corey, David Corey said, Pamela said, forget that. <laughs> He's stupid, look, because she ain't even here, so you know she knows. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like. <laughs> I can't hear y'all anyway. I'm like, good grief. Get that boom bap out of here. Really? That's what we doing? No boom bap? Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> So no. come on with the booming system. <laughs> really, copper chopper for the fifth Friday. <laughs> See what you started? Don't sell out. Okay. A lot of bro, man. It's five on. Fridays in a week. Y'all didn't know that? Five Fridays in a week. One I'm Friday, two yourself. Friday, when Friday, third Friday, and Friday. <laughs> it's a celebration. Uh -huh. mm -mm -mm. Um, I don't think so. I think I almost got it figured out. I'll be able to get it working. So get I want I want to <laughs> say again. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> no, I'm logged into the station, making sure everything I read on the radio station side. Nah, it's, yeah, it's not the radio station. It's um, it's over here on my side. Um. I think I found it. Boom. Yo, I'll solve it. Got it. Music's on. Doom, 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 doom. Okay. Don't get copywritten. You already got sued. Who got sued? <laughs> did the producer, the producer of uh, that song get, for, get uh, sued for using the, uh, who was it? The yeah, they didn't clear the sample. The yeah. original song, yeah, they never cleared that sample. Well, we took one guitar strum out of it, so it's not the same. Don't do that. They were under pressure. I've been singing that song this week. It's funny. I don't. 
I want to send a shout out and say a grand rising to the new subscribers. Appreciate you coming on because you can spend your time with anybody, anywhere, on any channel or not. So thank you for subscribing and hopefully we will meet or exceed your expectations. Want to send a shout out and grand rising to the Octoctonous Assembly Silent Majority. Without you, without your numbers, we do not exist. So we definitely, definitely want to thank you and know that just because we can't hear you, don't mean your presence is not felt. And a shout out and grand rising to the best chat ever on earth. That's right. With the F. Yeah, you're going to have to turn the music down a little bit before Pamela come in and kick the door in. Oh, oh Pete. Really? But I told y'all. Can you hear is that, right. Is that better? Is that better? <laughs> is that better? Is that better? Yup. Looking out for David and Pamela Hall is rising. Peace. All right. <laughs> Grand rising, David Corey. Grand rising, Big Chief. Grand rising, two witnesses. Grand rising, no sellout. Grand rising, Oak Cliff. Grand rising, Lady LJ Free. Grand rising, Doodoo -doo Vision. Grand Rising, Go, uh, Golden Moon, aka KD. Grand Rising, Copper Chopper 803. Let's see. Make sure I have everybody. If I miss anybody, don't shout out. You can catch them at the bottom because I'm starting. I started from the bottom and moving to the top, just so you know. I got you. Started from the bottom now. Yeah. Started from the bottom, because that's what I can reach. Um, Grand Rising, <laughs> Jay, Grand Rising, P. Parker, Grand Rising. That sounds like settling to me. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, I didn't say I wasn't going to climb. I said that's where I started, because that's what I could reach. Don't do that. I got you, I got you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see how, see, chat, y'all see how they treat me? I see how they treat me. Two witnesses says, Dude, I've been up since 4 a.m. Good grief. You got me beat. Uh, I like you got one of my schedules. I've only been up since 5. I feel like I feel like I'm slacking in these here YouTube streets. What is going on? <laughs> do, do, do I need to do some exercises or something? See, free, free. I told you that picture that I sent was true. Looking down on folks for getting up late. LJ Free says, tighten up. <laughs> All right, I'm going to tighten up. I'm going to tighten up. So before we hit this this clock, what did we learn yesterday? What were some of the takeaways from yesterday's discussion? Um, I'll start first. My takeaway was chapter Gura which is the original word for chess, which is Sanskrit, and realizing that two of the main pieces on that Chetagura game, or what they call chess, are the elephant and the chariot. Um, the chariot could actually be, I don't know, they'd have to, they'd have to, they would have to basically change the game the way they have it designed now, but I was um, definitely intrigued by uh, the original word, understanding it, puts things in proper perspective, it, it being named after the uh, the Berbers, um, specifically Hannibal Barak. Was it Hannibal Barak? Um, that was one of the things I took away. Don't sell out. What were some of the things you took away from what we what we were exposed to and what we learned yesterday? No. No. Okay. Bounce. Being that you were in a in a theoretical driver's seat yesterday, what were some of your takeaways from yesterday's um exposure? That's what we'll call it. 
Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I couldn't find the screen. My bad. You couldn't find the screen. Man, I'm trying to get back to Hangouts instead again. <laughs> there was no live call when I was there. <laughs> Go ahead, bones, my bad. You know Hangouts. You know Hangouts and YouTube are not cool anymore, right? They they got a divorce, bro. Clearly. Yeah. So, but go ahead. What were your takeaways from uh, yesterday's? Well, you only let me drive for two sentences, so. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Not do that. <laughs> he said, you don't know because I didn't let you drive for two sentences. <laughs> I'm going to go with your takeaways. How about that? So you took away from me. <laughs> this, oh, I took away from you. Tell, tell you what. You can be let the driver. Let me get a couple of paragraphs today, please, sir. How <laughs> about this? You can be the driver and the passenger today. How about that? <laughs> oh, so you're in the back seat? Mm-mm. Okay. See, <laughs> <laughs> can, can, can you please tell us what some of your takeaways were? Oh, I don't have any takeaways. Uh-oh, wow. No sellout. I mean, Bones. What? No. <laughs> bones. <laughs> yeah. Really? 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 That's what we doing? <laughs> no. <laughs> Basically... You know, what we did yesterday should help people know the connections of the language on that side or on that landmass. It should let people know what a Spaniard really is. It exposed what Spanish really is. And it shows why it's important to do your own research. That don't take what somebody tell you something is. You have to keep digging and find a name that people identify themselves as. Let's stop getting caught up in fighting over who got the best name for which oppressor? Let's throw all that away and dig through these records and find our true names. Because my belief is, once we know who we are, the world know who they are, and everybody can act accordingly. Very great point. It's your daddy, and what does he do? <laughs> no, so. David Corey says he learned that we are all Muslims because Muslim means to submit to the will of God. Yep. Or the creator, or however you want to phrase it. Islam to- itself, the translation of Islam literally translates to submission to submission to God. So mm-hmm. a Muslim follows Islam is one who submits their will to God. So if you believe in a higher power, a higher source, then by definition and definition alone, you are a Muslim. Two witnesses says um, the U.S. law is a form of, is is a form already of Sharia law. Sharia law. That's a good. It's one. not really Sharia law. It's Islamic law because Islamic law is the natural law. It's the law of nature. That's why I tell a lot of people instead of speaking on the Quran on what somebody told you, just read it for yourself. It will shock you. It would shock you what's really in the book. All this stuff telling you to kill people and do this, that is not in that book. I've been reading the Quran since I was a child. Lady J says Islam and Spanish are close in language. Well, Arabic and uh, Spanish. Islam is a way of life. Principles, five basic principles. I'm not reading what David Corey put in the chat about the Moors. But he right. All animals are Muslims. All animals, all living things would be Muslims. Okay. My bad, David. I I, I, I read something into it that I shouldn't have seen. I'm still I'm still coming out of that indoctrination, my bad. Okay, that's what's up. See, we've been we've been paying attention. Cool beans. Grand Rising EJ Copper Tone. Doodoo Vision says you can't be an hey, Indian. Hey, hey. You can't be oh, an Indian. Good. You can't be an Indian and not. I can't. Chat's moving. <laughs> Dude says you can't be an Indian and not submit to the will of God. Thank you. Indian equals Indios equals Guinea equals Genie equals Jim. Stop playing. Stop playing. That's right. Stop it. We got Swarth Vader Alton in the house. Man, you might want to copyright that. You 
might want to copyright that. Let's see what else we got. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and uh. Let's do it. Y'all know what time it is. Time to hit the clock. Real talk. Let's go. Time to get busy. So time to punch that clock. Let's do it. Hopefully all of the individuals in the chat wear ratchets, handing out the hard hats, shin guards. Hopefully somebody was manning the back hole, the front end loader. Hopefully we got some shovels, some hammers, because um, this is about to get into that steam. So let's do this. Let's do this. So I already put the link. To the to the Kabali people in the chat, so no sellout. Since you are the driver and the passenger today, hmm. we are ready to read. Oh, listen when if when you are ready to read. Kabil people, like Jack Grant right into the chat. Peace, everybody. We got you. We the got Kabil you. The Kabil people are a Berber ethnic group indigenous to Kabilia in the north of Algeria, spread across the Al Atlas Mountains, 100 miles east of Algiers. They represent a, the largest Berber speaking population of Algeria and the second largest in North America, North Africa. Sorry. Stop, please. Right there. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate you. Good looking out. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's right, LJ. LJ Free says, No, is that the wheel? Yes, he is. And he is driving and the passenger. So, let's look at it from this perspective. <laughs> we ain't gonna need no new brakes after the day. Just know about that. Yeah, we're not. No, we're not. I promise you. Then again, we might. Never know what happens. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. No, we yeah. we are just getting started. So I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> share my screen. <laughs> it's windy. It's windy. It's windy. It's windy. I'm going to share the screen, and we're going to discuss. We're going to discuss no, this. I'm saying again. That's what you call it, discuss. We're going to discuss, as soon as I find it on my screen, we're going to discuss, have a discussion. <laughs> Thank you, Bones. I didn't even know that. <laughs> it is Friday. Yeah, it's Friday. It's that oh, time. Man, it feels like one. <laughs> it's, sure time. It does now. it's time to put all heads to bed. So. Oh, is it? Yeah, it is. So, it says <laughs> they, they, they are a Berber ethnic group. So, what is a Berber ethnic group? We know. Hmm. Did, we ever up, did we ever look up what Berbers were? Let's do this. Yeah, yeah we can real quick to do a refresh on the Berbers before we started with it. Yeah. Just in case someone missed that part. Mm hmm. Amazighs, Berbers or Amazighs, are an ethnic group of several nations, mostly indigenous to North America, or North Africa. We know that was not called Africa. We know what the original name is, Maghrib, which changed to Africa after the Ottoman Empire took over. And some northern parts of Western Ethiopia. Why am I calling it Western Ethiopia? Because at the time that we're talking about these individuals being indigenous, this part of that continent was called Ethiopia, or Libya, or Corfri. This word did not come into existence until 2,000 years after.
after 700 according to Roman history. Berbers constitute the populations of Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, Mauritania, Northern Mali, Northern Niger, and a small part of Western Egypt. Berber nations are distributed over an area stretching from the Atlantic Ocean to the Siwa Oasis in Egypt and from the Mediterranean Sea to the Niger River in West Ethiopia. Historically, Berber nations spoke the Berber language. Ber excuse me. Yeah, Berber languages. Berber nations spoke the Berber language, which is a branch of Afro-Asiatic language family. The Berbers of Algeria were independent of outside control during the period of the Ottoman Empire rule. Now that's interesting because I did not know that. They were able to, I guess so they was able to maintain their language and their customs, I guess as long as they paid uh, taxes. That makes sense because that's the way the Ottoman rule. They lived primarily in three different nations. The kingdom of Ait Abbas, kingdom of Kuku, and the principality of Ait Juwar. Kingdom of Ait Abbas is a Berber nation of Northern Africa, controlling lesser Kabali and its surroundings from the 16th century to the 19th century it is referred to as the Spanish as it is referred to in the Spanish histo historiography of Reno de Lades sometimes more commonly referred to by its ruling family the Moghani in Berber at Bukharan in Arabic its capital was the Kala'a of Ait Abbas an impregnable citadel in the BBN mountain range. So now we know who the Berbers are. And what you will find interesting about these individuals, these Berbers, is they are not, not all of them, are, we're talking about the Kabbalah, they are not your swarthy Moors. They would not have been considered Moors, but we will get into that a little bit later. So I just wanted to um, point that out. So we are talking about Maghrib, which later became North Africa, the only part of Africa that was called North Africa. Grand Risings, Celestial Love, glad you made it, made it on the cab ride today. So there you go. All right, no sellout. Pick up from the second paragraph if you're ready. Are you ready? Hmm. Are we? Yes, we are. All right. Many of the Kabyle, not Kabyle or Kabyle, Kabyle. Many of the Kabyle have immigrated right, from Algeria, influenced by factors such as the Algerian civil war, cultural repression by the central Algerian government, and overall industrial decline. Their diaspora has resulted in Kabyl people living in numerous countries. Large populations of Kabyl people settled in France and to a lesser extent, Canada. Stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Canadian, I knew I was going to have to stop. <laughs> so think about this, they got all the way over, over to Canada. Uh-huh. From France, from, from Canada to France. Well, basically, it's from Algeria to Canada, from France to Canada. So they were able to do some. They were able to do some moving. So here's here's the question: If they got if they got to France, and we know France went to Canada, right? France, aka the Gauls, Canada, uh -huh. aka the north north part of what um, some of our ancestors called Turtle Island. Then, is it very possible that these people ended up in North America? I mean, we know that we know that they did, but they took a ride with the French, right? To get, yep. to get over here. But then you also got to remember too, the Kabali all part of the Ottoman Empire who had the largest naval at this time. Mm. Putting out a ship a day. That's true. 
See, that's the part I still have to get used to, that they're part of the Ottoman Empire. I keep thinking that they got taken over by the Ottoman Empire. So, okay. So they're not just some run-of-the-mill regular old folk. They just got um, overran or sacked, as they say, in this, during this time period. They actually were quote-unquote movers and shakers. Is that safe to say? That's right, two witnesses. No. He said, that's correct. Two witnesses said, that's crazy. One ship a day back then. Exactly. That should tell you about mm-hmm. the industrialism of these people. You know, some of the recessive colonizers will have you think that they were the ones that instituted everything or they were the ones that created everything without giving proper credit and due diligence to the individuals that were actually the formers, the shapers, and the makers of all that we see today. So, yeah, when you go back and you do the, look at the history and find out that there were a lot of things that we still use today because of these people. It is, it is amazing and phenomenal considering you're talking about this all the way back in the 700s. That's over, that's over, what, 1400 years ago? Mm-hmm. So you building, you building one ship a day over 1400 years ago. That's nothing to shake your head at. And there was no such thing as from what, from what, from what the American history tells us. There was no such thing as an assembly line, because according to American history, the assembly line didn't get introduced until the early, the early 1900s. But you telling me in 700, you have a, a group of people building a ship per day. That don't sound like some type of assembly process or some type of assembly mechanism or process to put things in proper order and perspective. I don't know what is. So again, and you would have to ha- you would have to have some type of setup to do that. Your division says a toxin is assembly line. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the reason why it's very important to, g- to get back and understand what's going on because stuff like this we we really can't take it for granted. LJ Free says when you I know was a little question. Go, go ahead, Bones. They made a ship a day. For a good period of time, what happened to all these ships later? Where they at, though? Mm. Because that could that be how Britain and all these other people end up getting their navy together, buying these ships from the Ottomans who made so many of them. Remember what the Ottoman problem was? Yes, they replaced their whole navy and made it twice as large as it was before, but they did not have the experienced captains anymore. That's so right. what did they do with all the chips? Probably sold them. I mean, that's what any that's industrial is. Co- yeah. Hmm. Makes sense to me. Makes a lot of sense. Now, says, when I says, when I was little, I remember using the terminology, I'm waiting for my ship to come in. I do remember people saying that. They even did comedy skits on that. Oak Cliff said, same ship y'all go on with your auntie and them. Talking about on cruises, Oak Cliff. <laughs> David Corey says, David um, Ford stole that the plant. Mm. All right, Durant, we got you. Just, um, just reach out to us when you get a chance. So, that's what's up. So, again... We have to understand the ingenuity of these individuals and what they brought to the table. So, Lady J says they reuse the wood because the, because in Europe was a shortage. There was a shortage of wood. I mean, the chat is going in today. Okay, he come. I should know Oak Cliff was gonna set it off. Oak Cliff says my sailor went to CC to see what he could see. See. <laughs> oh boy. That's not a tongue twister. Don't, I'm not repeating that. That's all I know is I am not repeating that. 
I know sellout. The Kabylians speak the Kabyle Berber language. Since the Berber Spring of 1980, they have been at the forefront of the fight for the official recognition of Berber languages in Algeria. This story. The Kabyle were relatively independent of outside control during the period of Ottoman Empire rule in North Africa. They lived primarily in three different kingdoms, the kingdom of Kuku, the kingdom of Ait Abbas, and the principality of Ait Jubar. The area was gradually taken over by the French during their colonization beginning in 1857, despite vigorous resistance. Such leaders as Laya Fatma in Sumer continued to re the resistance as late as Mokrani's rebellion in 1871. Stop, please. Mm -hmm. Oh, What's that? Female. What's that? What'd you say? No, I'm saying Yaya Fatima in Sumatra. <laughs> that picture or whatever. She's like a female. Is that a female? Yeah, it looks like it. But then oh, again, yeah. it's kind of hard to tell. I, I, I would think, I, I would think a lot of Fatima in Sumatra yeah, would, be a, would be a woman. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Warm on to warm on. Don't do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it says that the area was gradually taken over by the French during their colonization beginning in the 1857, despite vigorous resistance. So, this area was under Islamic rule basically for over for over a thousand years. So you yep. think it's starting at 700? And it didn't it didn't relinquish that control until 1857. And this is interesting. This is Bingo. the first time. This is the first time I am seeing this, and maybe I'm I'm not the only one. But this is the first time I'm I'm seeing or even paying attention to the fact there was French colonization. French. Now you don't hear about French colonizing anything in the uh, in the in the. The continent that we know is the Americas. But they started colonizing Maghrib and northern, northern, um, what is now known as Africa, which was originally known as Ethiopia. So, and even still, there was still rebellions and resistance by even, even some of the women. Can you imagine? Women warriors in 1857. The way that American history teaches, there was no such thing. Sure. You don't hear about them, right? Let let them tell a story. So you have a a, a Muslim woman warrior leading a rebellion. Now I don't think there was a pull up to a table and playing Ch Chituga. Uh, excuse me, Chutaranga, a.k.a. Chess. They was battling, they was fighting. So, just very interesting. Everybody was getting it in. Everybody was yep. getting it in. Ain't no, ain't no leader women at home. They was leading the fight over there, so. Let's not get it twisted, brothers. Go ahead, go ahead, um, no stop. Mm -hmm. Mic check. Mm-hmm, got gotcha. you. French officials confiscated much land from the more rec recalcitrant, recalcitrant tribes and granted it to colonists who became known as Pieds, Pieds Noir. During this period, the French carried out many arrests and deported resistors, men, mainly to New Caledonia. Hmm. Dude, yeah, what, what is that? What's going on? Stop, let me um see what the New, Cal New Caledonia. But you can see what's going on. Why today, the people there today don't resemble the original people? Because France bought people in and gave away their land. Same thing how they did to us over here. 
Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, you talking about the 1800s? They doing it to them at the same time they doing it to us. Man, I wonder I, how many any. I wonder how many American Indians they sent over there to set up them colonies. I'm mm, just saying, though. Man, you stole it. Get out my head, dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude, Caledonia is a special collectivity of France currently governed under the Naumia Accord, located in the southwest Pacific Ocean to the south of Va- Vanuatu, about 750 miles east of Australia. Whoa! Stop. Remember what? Remember this part of history. A lot of people keep forgetting that uh, when they were colonizing, if you was a troublemaker, they sent a lot of people to Australia and to the islands that was Australia because Australia was a prison colony. Man, listen. Well, man, listen. Peoples, listen. So the, and this is crazy because remember we talked about this, the French and the Ottoman Empire were at, on each other's side at one particular time. Is that right, Bones? Am I remembering this correctly? Yeah. Uh-huh. So now all of a sudden the French come in and colonize Maghrib. AKA Algeria, AKA the Berbers. And then shipped them out to a prison colony right off, off the coast of Australia. So you know they had to be swarthy, right? Some of them anyway. Yeah, some of them, they were yeah. half and half. Come on, man. And this is in what time frame? Go back up. So this is basically around 1890. <laughs> what else do we know that was going around, going on in the 1800s, late 1800s? Think about it. What we was going on? Exactly. And what had we just happened? Up. What had just happened in the Americas? What did they just complete in the Americas? Hmm. What had just happened? in the Americas between 1820 and 1890. Over 15 we million- We talked about 15 million Irish and, and Germans, Germans. indentured servants sent Get to out. the Americas. So there was a mass, there was a mass exportation. Is that right? Exportation of peoples. Mm-hmm. My thing is if you bought 15 million people land, where did the- you uh, most likely took 15 million out. Where did they go? You need to look at Australia. <laughs> exactly, Oak Cliff. Could this be our transatlantic slave trade or Slav trade? Yeah. Yes, it is. Oh, it ain't no could it be. It is, B. <laughs> Doodle Vision says Indian Removal Act while wooden show wearing Dutch came to America. Yeah, you have to ask yourself why were they removing the Indians? You know about the Indian Removal Act, now ask yourself why. They had to make they were space. Of their own people in. They had to make room. Again, information is just that information. If you're gonna if you're gonna present something, bring proofs, bring facts. We don't do emotions over here. We do drop your drop your uh, links, bring your proof, or hold your comments. That's just me, because the chat will the chat will block you. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, these individuals got sent to the colonies of um, Australia as prisoners. The French came in, took over, and removed these people. Like Baum said, that's the reason why, that's the reason why they are not the same people. That's the reason why they don't look the same. 
whenever you remove somebody, whenever you take somebody out of their natural habitat and put them somewhere else and replace them, those people are no longer those same people. And again, we have to go back to the question, who named these individual Moors? They didn't name themselves Moors. They were Berbers from Maghrib. So if that's the case, why do we, regardless of what ancestry you claim, why do we not use the names our ancestors gave us? Because what we're clearly seeing is that, clearly seeing is that when people are removed from their own continent and moved to another island, one is to intentionally rename them, two is to displace them, and three is to get control of the land so they can generate income to save or to promote more wars, basically, because you need to start taxing people. It's kind of hard to tax indigenous people. So, it is what it is. So, no sellout, you want to go ahead and finish? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> I thought I needed to find the mute button first before I found where I was at, but I didn't. Just over here wasting time, that's all. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Where we're at. Okay, due to French colonization, many Kabyle immigrated into other areas inside and outside Algeria. Over time, immigrant workers also went to France. So, immigrant workers, hold on, stop. Yeah, yeah. So, it says over time, immigrant workers also went to France. Mm-hmm. So they were still exporting people at this particular time. So their whole goal was to get rid of all of. There was a, their goal was to get rid of all of the Kabyle. Yeah. Out of, out immigrated, here. And Im- immigrated and immigrant were using those last two. They had to move them. And the more you learn about the Kabyle, you will understand why they had to move them. It blows this whole Morris story about the water. Remember, these people were called Moors ever since the 600s. And it had nothing to do with skin color. It had to do with area. Then it had to do anybody who they thought was an Arab. Then it had to do with anybody that was a Muslim. But as we go deeper, you'll see why when you see what these people look like. Oh, looks like we have someone, we have our first troll, y'all. Hey, by the way, the ratchet, Hello, y'all, y'all, y'all know what to do. No, it's cool. It's like this. When people want to show up and be disrupting, don't even pay no attention. If they really want to know the history of the Moors, just check the links. I hope they can read Arabic, because if you can't, there's really not too much you can say. Moving on. Mm-hmm. All right, you can go ahead. Um... Don't sell out. Somebody's audio playing or is that me? Um, I don't have anything in the background playing. That was me for a second. Okay. <laughs> I'm, about to say, look, I'm like, I'm looking at all my screens. Like, hold on, which I'm one like, is it? I'm like, we got hat. What the world? <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. So in the 1920s, Algerian immigrant workers in France organized the first party promoting independence. Masala, Masali Hajj, Im, uh, Imach, or Imache Amar, C. Jelani and Belkassim Rajef rapidly built a strong following throughout France and Algeria in the 1930s. They developed militants who became vital to the fighting for an independent Algeria. This became widespread after World War II. Hmm. Hmm. So, get my head. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> you got it you got it <laughs> I know two witnesses he said after World War II that's what that what struck me he said stop yeah. okay gotta do it <laughs> two witnesses said stop gotta do it yeah. you got it rewind <laughs> two witnesses be on it so look <laughs> 
they developed militants. Excuse me, they developed militants who became vital to the fighting for an independent Algeria. So, and Algeria up until this point was still under French rule, and it said became widespread after World War II. That's relatively a close timeline, y'all. When we when we look at how things operate, how things work on this side of on this side of the water, as we're going through our own history and listen to history, uh, keep everything a mystery. What we're seeing is that there are stuff going on simultaneously, and it's not just happening here on this this continent. It's happening everywhere, and the way history, the Huguenots write history is that these are isolated incidents that have absolutely nothing to do with one another when they absolutely have everything to do with one another. You have these Berbers from Algeria who got expelled and sent to France. They are now fighting for independence for Algeria because it's under French rule. Like Alan Clay says a Dutch colonized Australia exactly so everybody's fighting for freedom at this particular point in time so here's so here's the question how many how many of the quote unquote indigenous people are actually owed some form of reparations because this is happening everywhere simultaneously and would it be so I think I think I remember um, Bone saying something about this too. Would it be so surprising that the ADOS movement has absolutely nothing to do with the swarthy, the dub, the tawny, the heavily melanated peoples, and they try to give this ADO, ADO, ADOS, ADOS money to the recessive Europeans? For them being slaves, or them being the Slavs, based off of the definition and the spelling, and could that in fact cause a riot, which would in turn implement or constitute the President of the United States declaring a state of an emergency, and then forcibly moving the progenitors of the fight somewhere else to make room for the 15 to 17 million immigrants that need to come into this state i'm just saying something to think about because the whole goal yeah, is to but that's people. the thing people got to realize is that when they're talking about this whole slavery thing don't fall when you fall into the narrative that they're talking directly about us you fall into the narrative that all melanated people were slaves they're not talking about us Exactly, but the narrative that some of our own people are pushing is that, <clears throat> excuse me, is that that they are. So if that's the case, and, and people are believing that because they're not doing the research or not properly researching for themselves, if nothing else, then they would just blindly believe it, blindly accept it, and then when it doesn't happen, can you imagine the roller coaster that would be? You set yourself up for something that's going to be great, and you anticipate it. And some people, you know, some people are they anticipate, 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 and then when it doesn't happen, the amount of great letdown that would be for them. So, think about it. If you want to really know who they're talking about, we did the 18, what 28 uh, dictionary definition of American. Mm. It says AUS. At 1828, the new American was the European. So when they say ADOS, American descendants of slavery, who is mm. considered the American now? The, Europeans, the Europeans born on this soil. That's, on this soil. That's what they're talking about. Remember, the dictionary and law go hand in hand. When they change the definition, I promise you a new law comes about. Right. 1828. A lot of things were happening in 1828. That's when they first they started the first shipment of Irish and Germans over here. Remember, it was it, according to history in Ireland. 
they emptied half of Ireland and brought them over to the Amer- what is known as the Americas. Yep, over 7.5 million, more than half their population. So who replaced them? Because uh, there's a whole lot of people on that island today. So, so who did they bring in? When they took these people out of Ireland, these 7.5 million, when they took these 7.5 million out of Germany, who did they replace them with? Good question. They replaced them with somebody. And Hold on, let me see if I can... put new immigrants to Ireland. And that's why it boils down to when you go through history, you have to ask yourself who, why, how. Because a lot of these beliefs that we hold on to, we have to start asking ourselves who told us. If you didn't look up the information for yourself, research it, read it for yourself, how can you follow it blindly? You could it sound good. Last I remember uh, in real life, a lot of things that sound good and badly. Let me see something. I'm saying it's talking about the uh, the Irish. Okay. Yeah, that's the part they probably won't tell you. Yeah. Or you probably have to go over there, or you probably have to go to Ireland to find out or check their records to find out. Yeah, because everything I'm seeing is 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 Ireland's immigration to uh, the Americas, and it was still going on in in the early 1900s. I mean, there are a lot of websites that talk about it starting in 1846. How they came over here. Let me do this. Let me look at the population of Ireland right now. Wow, dude. Hold on. Okay, I gotta share this. You're not gonna believe this. Break it on down. All our hats, strap up, let's do it. Give me okay. Ah, okay, there we go. This is from worldpopulationreview.com. There are only 4,894,300 people in Ireland right now. They still have not replaced those people. So I wonder who stayed then. It says... Ireland's 2019 population is estimated just over 4.8 million according to the most recent U.S. U.N. projections. When discussing the population of Ireland, it's important to make distinctions between two territories that are separately politically separated politically. Um, geographically speaking, the term Ireland relates to both the Irish Republic and, and Northern Ireland. The most recent Ireland census was taken in 2011, which recorded a total of 4.5, I was say 4.6 million. This represented an 8.2 increase from the 2006 numbers. The most recent census was taken in 2016, but the final results are still being uh, tabulated. Primarily, the results put the total population at 4.7 million, which is a bit higher than the UN projections. This 
makes Ireland the 124th most populated country in the world. So then it goes on to break down the cities. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's up? So at 4.7 million, mm-hmm. and we know at one time the population there was close to 15 million. Mm-hmm. That's overpopulation then. Yeah. 15 million people overpopulated. That that island was overpopulated. Just like all these areas. Remember else what we learned? We learned that the Ottoman Empire took um got it to what 30 million people? What later became known as Spain had up to 15 million. You can start seeing the overpopulation going on. Mm. Right before the mass uh exodus of the land of Europe, continent formerly known as Africa. Yeah, but can you, yeah, I see. I see your point. So they dumped more than half of the population out of Ireland onto the Americas. Yep, mainly uh, they went to the islands first, working on the sugar plantations. Now, do you see why? timelines are important and why taking things in its perspective and looking at things at a broader scope is important because if we don't we just might miss something that's why you have Irish history in Jamaica Haiti, Barbados mainly the islands, that's why you have a lot of Irish descendants there a lot of people from the islands if you actually do your genealogy you will see where a lot of these Irish tie in and just because they Irish does not mean that they're pale Europeans. Make no mistake about it. You have melanated Irish, melanated Germans. Benjamin Franklin's letter proves that alone. Let me pull up that letter. Absolutely. Get them out. Anybody else in the chat? Alboria, Alan Clay, Enrique, Lady J. I'm sure we already shouted her out. Sheena Miles, I believe I just said that. Yeah, we know the yams are ours. We call it by sweet potato. Yams of Africa, they're white. They're more like potato-ish, starchy. Same name, but two different uh, crops. You can get the white yam in the islands too. This also can be found in the um, National Archives, but it was easy for me to pull it from here. Yeah. Okay, so it says immigrants. So this is coming from Benjamin Franklin in the, in the late um, 1500s. He says immigrants to America have always been feared and hated. Germans represented the largest group of immigrants of America, outnumbering the English and Irish by a wide margin. Nearly 20% of Americans can trace their ancestors back to Germany, but they were not usually universally welcome to our shores um it says uh lewis rambart reminds us that one of our iconic founding fathers benjamin franklin warned about german immigrants overrunning america in in language that sounds very much like that of mitt romney and rolling coke (laughs) Coke. franklin warned that germans were too stupid to learn english and therefore represented a political threat to america which is interesting because you know Benjamin Franklin, <clears throat> he spoke French. Mm-hmm. So then he goes on to, this is a quote from one of his rants in his letters, like I said, which can be found in the National Archives. So don't don't get mad at me. Those who came hither are generally of the most ignorant, stupid sort of their own nation. as And as few of the English understand the German language and so cannot address them either from the press or pulpit, it's almost impossible to remove any prejudice that once entertained. Not being used to, liber- used to liberty, they know not how to make a modest use of it. I remember when they most modestly declined 
intermeddling in the, our elections, but now they come in droves and carry all before them except in one or two countries. In short, unless the stream of their importation could be turned from this to other colonies, as you very judiciously propose, they will soon so outnumber us that all the advantages we have will not, in my opinion, be able to preserve our language and even our government to become and will become precarious. Where is it? What I'm looking for? Okay. So then he goes on and um, talks about his, his objections to Germans. But here's the most important part. And the reason why this quote, especially in, uh, in, in 24, it, it's, it's, it's so telling is because anybody that knows anything about uh, his story in America, what they promote as being a man of honor, a legend, and, and quote, outright honesty. It's someone that everyone should esteem to be like. So when he makes these statements that I'm about to read, you can't say that he's not lying after you've perpetuated this man and put him on this pedestal of, of total honesty. So either he was lying then or you're lying about him now. Either way. Make up your mind. So he says, hold on, let me get the dope. It says, which leads me to add one remark, that the number of purely white people in the world is proportionally very small. He says, all of Africa is tawny. In the original writing, he didn't put the word, he didn't have the word black. He said, all of Africa is tawny. And then he says, um, Asia is chiefly tawny. America, now here's a, here's a key part. America, exclusive of newcomers, holy so. Holy so what? Tawny? Swarthy? Because what he originally said of Africa was that if they were swarthy or tawny. That's what he said. Go look at the National Archives version of this. We'll pull up and put it in the chat. So if that's the case, then... America exclusively of the newcomers. Who would be the newcomers? Would be them. Holy so. And in Europe, the Spaniards, Italians, French, Russians, and Swedes are generally of what we call a swarthy complexion, as are the Germans, also the Saxons only accepted, who with the English make the principal body of white people. Stop. So these words coming out of the mouth of one of our most renowned, honest, overly opinionated founding father, their words not mine, is that the whole of all the continents was either mostly swarthy or tawny. So when the first wave of Germans and Irish came over here from France, because they had to, they needed to do what? They needed to make room. Who had the most room? The Americans. So if that's the case, the majority of the Irish and the Germans that came here in the late 1600s, were what? Tawny? Swarthy? And Swarthy. Out of his own mouth, Benjamin Franklin says, the number of purely white people in the world is proportionally very small. He didn't say just small. He said very small. Go ahead, David Corey. Tawny today will represent Chan. See, he's telling you that you had melanated people from the lightest of light to the darkest of dark. Big Chief says, 40 years ago, most Mexicans in Mexico was darker than most of us. I have no doubt, mm -hmm. Big Chief. I have no doubt. Panamanian. 
So then it goes on to say that, um, except with, oh, and then he talks about the Saxons, because we know the Saxons were, 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 were your majority, very recessive, light complected individuals who weren't even close to being tawny or, or tan. So then he says, the Saxons only expected who was English make the principal body of white people. So Saxons and English are the only individuals at this time during this rant are the only white people. So then he says to make up the principal body of white people on the face of the earth. <laughs> mm hmm. They didn't say the area, they didn't say the town, city, continent, whole earth. On the face of the earth. So I, I ask you again, my relatives. When the first wave of Germans and Irish came over here, either from the area of Germany or Ireland, who were your original nobles that they kicked out and replaced with the albinos, some they sent to Australia, the penal colonies, some they sent to North Africa. Is it possible that the narrative that is being spoken when they talk about these people coming from Africa were the actual, actual swarthy Germans and Irish that were sent to Australia and Africa first and then came here? And also, too, they mixed them up Bingo. on purpose with the swarthy Irish and Dutch, Franks, Germans, that came directly from Europe. Is that possible? Because if it yes, is possible, it. somebody has some explaining to do. Because these words are Benjamin Franklin's, not mine's, not A2's, and we're not creating no spinning in there. Now, if we're going to sit here and claim that he was a very honest and upstanding citizen, then we have to take him at his words. And they, this is in the National Archives. So if that's the case, then the mystery of the transatlantic slave uh, transatlantic slave trade has been solved. What are we talking about? That's why I always say we can't jump out there and saying that there was no slave trade. There was a slave trade. Just the parties to be, they changed the characters. People keep asking about the ships. You can see the ships. Look at all the ships it would take to bring 15 million people here between 1820 and 1870. You're talking about over 20 million people. And that was the second wave. That wasn't the first wave. The first wave That's happened. Not exactly. The first wave happened before the 13 colonies declared their independence in 1776. Who was the two were the two countries that backed the United States when they did, when they declared their independence from Great Britain. Great Britain. Somebody? Anybody? Who? Tell me. Give you a hint. Franks. Romans. It was the French. The French were the ones that vouched for the United States, then 13 colonies, then the, co the colonies, for them to be declared independent from Great Britain. But now ask yourself why? Because they was just backing their own cousins. They were backing their people. Yes, the English had colonies over here, but the people in them colonies, make no mistake about it, they were Franks. Right, Copper Pride, it was France. And remember, <clears throat> at this time, remember what happened. We're talking about the late, um, late 17th century, which is the late 1600s. What was going on with the Ottoman Empire at that time when they had over 30 million people just on the Eastern Roman Empire side? What was the one thing that we heard from their own mouths? They ran out of land and they were overpopulated. So, Let's use deductive reason here. They have no more land 
and they have no more resources. You have a land that's rich and wealthy with resources and they can take on people. So if you want my help being the Ottoman Empire and the French, what are you what are you gonna do for me? Why should we help you? What do you have that we need to help you? Because they didn't just do it out of the kindness of their heart. There was a reason why it was done. You gotta take on our people. We are gonna send some people to you. That's why Benjamin Franklin was upset because who was the ambassador to France at that particular time? Who spent that over done. nine years in France? According to American history, not a two's history, not in the Aboriginal history, according to the American history, who spent nine years in France as an ambassador? Tell me, who? Benjamin Franklin. That's why he was ranting, because he knew that in order for them to gain their independence from Great Britain, they were going to take on all of these people. Now, here's, a, here's something to think about. How long were they going to take on all these people? What do you think these treaties were really about? <laughs> Think about that. You still have a lot. You still have immigrants coming over. Think about this. Why are some people allowed in the United States and some people are not allowed in the United States? Why is it easier for some people to get a green card and then end up getting citizenship versus other people who are trying to get a green card and get citizenship? They are still oh, coming like over. Pretty. They're still coming over to this day. That agreement was not just a one-time invitation. No. It was a business agreement. That is still You got to remember, happening. who had all the ships? Who had, realistically, honestly, everybody keep asking, oh, where did they get all these so-called slave ships from? They didn't have to build no new ships. The Ottoman Empire had a boatload of them. They built the ship a day. They told you at the Moor show people to America. But now you got to ask yourself, what did that really mean? They were the boat captains. They had all the ships. Again, they built a ship a day. <laughs> Come on, let's connect the dots, relatives. The Ottoman Empire and France, they made a business deal together. They needed transportation. How was all these Protestants being moved around? How was all these Catholics being moved around? These people didn't have no time to build no ships. They were fighting for over 100 years. The only people that had a Navy that size was the Ottomans. Remember, they said the Ottoman Empire stretched all the way up, what, to the North Pole, down to the South, all the way through the Atlantic. They went everywhere. Them and the Vikings. At the end of the day, 15 million people came over here the second time. Bones, do, is there or is there not 10 gigs of ships coming from Europe to America and going back? Does that not exist? Yes, it do. No, no, it exists me. so much to the point you can access it on the Continental Assembly form. No, excuse me, 10 it's terabytes, records. not 10 gigs, 10 terabytes. Mm -hmm. 10 terabytes worth of shipping records. Shipping records. Name of the ships, name of the captains, what the people owed, and their names and where they were coming from. Some of the relatives have been on there already looking through them. If there are any relatives that have been on, been, on the, been on that form and looked at those records, do those, can you verify that those records exist? Give me a one if you've been on the forum and you can verify that those records exist. So, because at the end of the day, again, it's about getting it right. I can tell you where to go to get the information. We just sent you the link to go get the information. 
Now, if you're saying otherwise, show us some proof. That's all I'm saying. Again, if you're coming over here, you got to bring proof, which you just can't bring an attitude. Can't bring your mouth. You can't bring no trouble. Bring proof. Bring a link. Bring a source. Bring a friend. Bring somebody, anybody that's going to be able to vouch or verify what you say, some source, please. That's all I'm asking. If not, behave. Stop oh, well, we know. Off. If it's a potluck, bring oh. some food. Prefer <laughs> yeah, big, big call. We, uh, yeah, we know that some of the Vikings were melanated. Their name, they split it up that way. Mm-hmm. Fingale and Dovetail. Dovetail, exactly. Fin meaning fair or white. Dove meaning swarthy or black. That's why you have Finland and Dovetail. It's in, in history. Yep. It's in, it's in the Vikings' history. It's in their history. But a lot of people don't want to talk about the Vikings because there's a lot of explaining you would have to do. Like how they got their butt with by the Ottomans and, them, and, the, and the Indians? Mm-hmm. Indians on oh, this Vikings continent. fought the Ottomans? Yes, the Vikings fought the Ottomans. Yes, the Vikings fought our ancestors too. And got their behinds whooped both times. They got so they got beat so bad by the Ottomans, they turned them into cheese makers. Cheese heads. Pun intended. And our ancestors turned around and did the same thing and turned them into cheese heads. Oops, my bad. So here's the situation again. Our whole goal is to get it right. But at the same time, if you're gonna disagree with something, bring your source. Don't just make an emotional statement and you have no sources to back it up. That's all I'm saying. Cause you, you come into my house with your dirty shoes and you don't take your shoes off, you are gonna get kicked out. The saying, I kick you out. I don't care. Moving on. No sell out. You can um go ahead and um finish reading. Read sentence three. Yes, okay, I will. Don't do that. It's not a sentence. It's a paragraph. <laughs> First paragraph is one sentence. Um, yeah. Since Algeria gained independence. Since Algeria gained independence in 1962, tensions have arisen between Kabili and the central government on several occasions. In July 1962, the FLN, National Liberation Front, was split rather rather than united. Indeed, many actors who contributed to independence wanted a share of power, but the ALN, National Liberation Army, directed by Aouri, or Haori, uh, Boumedine, joined by Ahmed Ben Bella, Seem to had seemed to had the upper hand, seem to have the upper hand because they of their military forces. What? Wow. In 1963, the FFS party of Ho Sin Ait Ahmed contested the authority of the FLN, which had promoted itself as the only party in the nation. Ait Ahmed and others consider that the central government led by Ben Bella is authoritarian and on September the 3rd, 1963, the FFS Socialist Forces Front was created by Hossein Ait Ahmed. His party regrouped people against the regime regime in place and a few days later, a few days after his proclamation, Ben Bella sent the army to Kabili to repress the insurrection. Colonel Mohand Oel Haj had also taken part in the FFS in the Marquise because he considered it that Maj, Maj, Mujahideen, 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 yeah, Mujahideen, Mujahideen, were not treated as they should be. At the beginning, the FFS wanted to negotiate the gov- with the government, but since no agreement was reached, the Maquis took up arms and its representatives swore not to give them up as long as the democratic principles and justice were a part of the system. But after Mohand well, Hajj's defection, Ait Ahmed could barely sustain the movement. And after the FLN Congress on April 16, 1964, which reinforced the government's legitimacy, he was arrested on October 1964. As a consequence, an insurrection was a failure. The insurrection was a failure, 
1965 because it was hugely repressed by the forces of the ALN directed by Howery Boudmedine. In 1965, Ait Ahmed was sentenced to death but was later pardoned by Ben Bella. Approximately 400 deaths were counted amongst the Maquis. Stop, please. Mm -hmm. So, here we go. These were the individuals that were located in France, correct? Oh no, this was in Algeria. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, but this is after they started setting French colonies up too. Mm -hmm. So this would be French people fighting uh, the indigenous people there. So uh, against the Kabali. The same thing is happening everywhere at the same time. Cause think about think about what's happening, right? People getting arrested, there's insurrections. What year is this? 1964. 1965, 64, wow. Hmm. What's, what's going on in America? I was just... <laughs> <laughs> get out my head, get out my head. What's going on in 1964? Coincidences? I don't think so. What's going on with all of that information? What's going on with, with all of those protests and things going on in, 60, in 1965, 67? Who were the prominent leaders of, of the quote unquote black people in America at that time? There was a movement, right? Just like there's a, there was a movement over, over in Nigeria. Now here's a question. Would it be interesting if the FLN was like the um what's that organization in the US? NAACP. NAACP. Wouldn't that be interesting? Hmm. The National Liberation Front Nigeria. Is a nationalist political party in Nigeria was principal nationalist movement during the Algerian War and sole legal and ruling political party of the Algerian state until other parties were illegalized. In 1989, the FLN was established in 1954 from a split in the movement of the triumph of the democratic liberties from members of the special organization's parliamentary its armed wing the national libertarian Li liberation army participated in the algerian war from 1954 to 1962 after the evian accords of 1962. the party purged internal internal dissent and ruled algeria as one party state after the 1988 october riots and after the Algerian Civil War, 1991 to 2002, against Islamist groups, the FLN was re has was re-elected to power. 2002 Algerian legislative election, and has generally remained in power ever since. Although sometimes needing to form coalitions with other parties. So since the background of the FLN can be traced back to the growing anti-colonialism and Algerian nationalist sentiments since the outbreak of World War II. The repressions against the Algerian Muslims population intensified as the Adel Hamid bin Abadis got placed under house arrest in Marshall's Pitane's government banned the Algerian Communist Party and the Algerian Party People's Party. As the war turned gradually more in favor of the Western allies given the U.S. global engagement and its identical campaign against colonism, colonialism, the core sentiment against the Algerian nationalists was to use the victory in Europe to promote the independence of the country, which is reflected by the issues and of the manifestos of the Algerian people of Fair Abbas. I, I want to say something right quick, and I want y'all want y'all to track with me. J. Edgar Hoover's main con bone of contention with um. Dr. Martin Luther King, what did he accuse him of being? Anybody remember? What did he accuse the majority of our 
leaders being at that time. Does the term communist ring a bell? Now, correct me if I'm wrong. It seemed like any organization or any group that rose up that was fighting col um, colonism at this time, colonization at this time, were considered communist groups. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right? Right. Right. So, if the leaders understood that we had been colonized and they had empathy with the individuals of other continents that had been colonized that's why they were calling them communists I mean that would make sense right so there's this whole propaganda of what communists and what communism is when it turns out again do your research that communism was nothing more than what it appears on the face of people that were suppressed fighting against the government who were colonizing them So could it be that communism was squashed out or there was this whole thing, this whole news feed about stomping out communism because they wanted to suppress colonization all over? Bingo. Indigenous American Leo said that was in one of my videos. See, great minds think alike. Indigenous American Leo said they flipped the script. Yes, they did. So again, this is happening all over the world. Oak Cliff says communion, suppression. Kill the Indian, save the man. Look at this thing. It Go has to happen all over. It has to happen all over the world at the same time. In order to pull this off, you can't fool one group of people. You gotta fool everybody. You gotta change everybody, man. You gotta you gotta shuffle everybody over the board. That's the only way. Can't leave a large group of people knowing the truth. That's a problem. Mm-hmm. Oak Cliff says, reconstruct. LJ Free says, remember we read about the communists that had more accurate depictions of indigenous people in their exhibits, but no one would go. They preferred to see the stage performances. That's right. <laughs> El Boris says, I got too white, man. Ain't wrong me with this on all in my ear in their ears. And I don't care about their feelings. <laughs> El Boris, don't get in no trouble now. That right, Oak Cliff. World fans. Two but this is government equal control minds. So again, that's the reason why timelines are so important because we see what the, we see what the game is. The jig is up. We have to be very careful. And I mean, we all of us, I'm not just talking about those of us who claim to be Moors or what have you. We have to be very careful of what we call ourselves and what we indoctr indoctrinate ourselves with. Because if not, we gonna fall for the, what is it, uh, the banana in the tailpipe? Yeah, because you got to remember, this story isn't one layer. No, it's a layer on top of a layer on top of a layer. And I agree 100% with TMH. We have to make sure we don't leave one form of indoctrination for another form of indoctrination. That's why before you make that choice, research. I mean, that's the best thing that you can do. Do not go into anything blindly. Know the history of it, the real history. Find out what words originally meant, especially once you find the land that that word come from. Find out what the true definition is so you can find out what people were really saying. To me, that just makes sense. Think about it. We did it the other day. How many people run to the 1828 definition of American? I know I was guilty of it. I ran to it like it was the Holy Grail. Ha! See that? See that? 
<laughs> we're not realizing what they're telling you. The definition is telling you they switch places with you. That before 1828, um, Americans were the Indians. After, it was European. So if you're not of European descent, then you're not an American. Right, from 1828 to present. Before 1828, it was a copper color races, the copper color people that were found here by the Europeans. Now, it's the Americans, it was the Europeans that are native to here or that were born here. And again, it would make sense that they do that because if they don't, think about it, if they don't do that, right? If they don't change the definition of America and make it a law of what American is, you have, poss let's just say half of, we, we ignore. <laughs> let's just say we ignore what Ben Franklin said about a majority of the world being swarthy itself for two places, England and, and Saxon. Let's ignore that. But let's just propose that half of the individuals that came over here in the 1800s from 1820 to 1890, let's just say 7 million of the 15 million, 7.5 million of the 15 million people that came over here were swarthy. The other half were recessive, half and half. You would still not know the difference between those swarthy individuals and those Indians. So basically, by definition, copper colored people, they could come here look like our ancestors and unless unless they told you remember enumeration meant that somebody had to go out and talk to these people and find out what their nationality was or who they were and in many cases they didn't talk to them they just guessed based off of the area and based off of the look so if you can you imagine an enumerator going to the south South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia. And, and doing an enumeration on a bunch of dark people that came that were black Dutch and black Irish. How would they know that they were not from an Indian tribe? How would they know? And if they did not know they were from an Indian tribe, what would that do to the numbers? And here's the most important part. What would that do to political races? in the South. How would that affect the politics in the South? How would that affect who runs and who becomes the governors in the South if they do not change the definition? Just a thought. You infuse seven million swarth. Again, I said, if you just propose that only half the people that came over here from Europe, I mean, from Germany and Ireland were swarthy, so half and half. You already know that the northern, the, 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 the non-swarthy or the recessives would have went where? They would have went north. They would have been, they would have been able to deal with the temperatures. Exactly, Pamela Hall, it would be, a, they would not be able to tell anything So here's the deal. So let's just make this simple. Let's just change the definition of what an American is. So when these non-Americans come over here, AKA swarthy, tawny people, we don't have to guess. They don't look like us, so they ain't American. Bingo. And you know what else is telling? See, a lot of people like to complain about their senses. But if you want to see how true and how the change in the definitions and laws made this possible, look at the 1820 census. Then look at the 1830 census. Then look at the 1840 census. You will notice between the years of 1830 and 1840, the population jumped 32.7%. You had multiple cities turning in populations over a million people in less than 10 years. How? That's all these immigrants coming in. Look at how the questions changed on the census 
from 1820 to 1830 to 1840s. Anybody notice in the same category where they got the slave? It says unnaturalized foreigners. Hmm. So at the end of the day, we got to realize what's going on here. The narrative has been switched. 1828, the Americans are new Americans. They are Europeans born in America. So now what do they have to do after they retitle all these people? You got to figure out what to do with them. How do you put them to work? How do you reconstruct a system that's going to implement or that's going to accommodate 15 million new people? Well, you got to get rid of at least 15 million people. In comes the Indian Removal Act. You remove as many Indians as you can so 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 let's 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 remember because we actually read some of the um some of the inserts from the actual treaties when it came down time when it came time for these people to move it was voluntary at first remember you have the opportunity to move remember what happened two years later you were forced, forced to, move. to move okay Micro, micro. Look up the 18, 1861 and 1862 Confiscation Act. That's the act that allowed them where they deemed if they thought that you helped the South during the war, they can confiscate your land and, pro and belongings if they thought that you supported the South in any way during the war. Mm-hmm. That's 1861-1862 Confiscation Act. So fast forward to 2018. The president of tourism in Ghana makes a, a public apology and invites African Americans, quote unquote, back home. There is a push or a referendum or an act in the government talking about 400 years of slavery to be recognized. That act ends in June of 2020. To yep. coincide with, mind you, the 2020 census, where, in fact, they have removed Negro off of the census. Bingo. The last phrase that ties you, that ties me, that ties our ancestors to Indians. So they remove it off the census. And now you're either black, African American, or African. <laughs> yep. You have the right but it's kind to of funny. go ahead, Grandpa. But it's you funny. That, but it's funny. They still separated you in three categories: black, African American, or African. Ain't that funny? Well, no. If Put you, you look, in some made up so-called like African look, look, racial groups. No, no, bro. I got a. I got an actual copy. You can go into the to the census website, and there's a copy of the um, proposed census. And in that proposed census, they have black, African-American, and African on the same line. Mm-hmm. So, so, so here we go. You have black, African, and African-American on the same line. And, in, and if you choose African, you have to choose what house in Africa you're from. Hmm, that don't seem fishy relative. Now, what you don't know about the census, and please don't believe me, do your own research. 
If you do not determine who you are, you're automatically giving the enumerator, the electronic enumerators permission to tell you who you are. So if you don't fill it out, they gonna fill it out. And all they gonna do is fill it out based off of where you live. So if 90% of the people oh, in that area, yeah, uh, go ahead. The chat wanted to know, uh, do you have a link to the uh, census thing so they can take a look at it? I, I will go look for it. Matter of fact, let me put it in the chat because I have to go find it. But, right. but please remind me, I'll make sure we, we put, in a, um, put it in the form. So don't no let me problem. forget. And then you can actually go to this. Hold on, let me see if I can pull up on the census website. Do it that way. Census Bureau website, census.gov. And like TMH was saying, if you do not fill out the census, they will fill it out for you. They will determine who you are. Remember to fill out the census, isn't it self-identification on the census? Mm-hmm, sure is. So you're doing your genealogy and you know you're here at a particular point in time, and self-identify as an American Indian. Ain't nobody putting a gun to your head to tell you to claim this fictitious person. It's a choice. But now if you willingly choose to, you willingly choose. That's by filling it out yourself or not participating at all. You willingly choosing to be an African American. I'm with you 100%, uh, Pamela Hall, American Indian all day on the census. Indian is from Indios. Here's a link to the census on how to respond. I'm looking for the um the actual copy of it now. Give me a second. A little longer. You're gonna choose you're gonna choose to be a descendant from a black racial group of Africa. Can somebody point out one of these racial groups? And it's funny, they say one of the racial groups of Africa, but they don't name not one racial group. <laughs> and we know what the we know the true definition of Indian it comes from Indios. The children of God. Which is a Ladino, which is from a Ladino word. And that predates Columbus. That's in all the records. Why is it not? You must enter a primary email address. I am entering a primary email address. So you can actually, let me show y'all what I'm doing. So I've registered. Okay. So it says, 
you can take part be a researcher study training opportunities you could do be sir you could be a surveyor become a participant um you could be, get survey alerts i would suggest for those that are able to do so take part in the census or, and become a, um an enumerator that way you can get the information if you're in a situation to where you can actually um, participate, I would do so. Right now, I'm just going to put get information. My census test. I'm going to post the link of the origin of the word Indian pertaining to the American Indian. Doing that right now. So for those that say that mean that it means something negative. It's funny when people say that, but they never tell you the source of that. You ever notice that? Why is it people that that have ulterior? Well, let me not let me not be, do that. It would be nice. Why does it appear that people that have ulterior motives will tell you something means, but they never give you the source? I'm just saying. You tell somebody all day what somebody means, and when somebody asks for the source, you go well, go look it up. Well, here, here's my thing. If you tell me what something means, you should provide me the source because you're the one that's telling me. Why do I go? Why do I have to go look it up? Well, at least tell me where you got it from. Don't give me some information and tell me to go look it up. No, you tell me where you got it. Unless you're just making stuff up. Because if you're making something up, then you don't have a source and you can't provide the source. That's how rumors get started. Just a thought. I wasn't able to find it, but I will. I will um, put it in the chat. My, let me. No, no, no. Pamela says you said you can't find it on your Facebook page, Pamela. You can't pull it up. Let me do this right quick. I think I know where I put it. Give me one second. Pamela Hall said it's on her Facebook page, uh, full definition in a year. Okay. Any census instructions. Me too, Michael Brown, because you hear it a lot. People say Indian mean non believer, but like they may say it, they can never give you a source. Well, I can keep finding plenty of sources that say it means children of God. And what did James just say earlier about Indians? Come on, son. Oh, no, about what? Actually, did he connect that to Muslim, Muslim and Indian? Yep. find it at this time, but I will promise you I will find it. I don't know where I put it. Yeah, I post a snippet for uh, the definition of Indian. time but yeah we'll get it 
I'll make sure I get that. I ain't got to worry about y'all letting me forget it, because I know y'all don't let me forget it, but I'll have it. We'll put it in the form. So, so like I was saying, if you don't put down, or you don't put the information that you are whatever you your genealogy has told you that you have accepted, they will fill it in for you. They're not going to just leave it blank. They will fill in something. Now, let's just say they are looking to remove 15 million people from this continent. Let's just say Ados happens to decide that they're going to, in 2025, they're going to, they've, they've determined who they're going to give this money to. <laughs> and the people that they give the money to are the descendants of the Americans. And they hit you with that 1828 definition of American. And it's any European who family members was a slave on a ditch or serpent. How do you think Say people what? how do you think people are gonna feel about that? Do you think there will be riots? Do you think there will be problems? What is the government going to be, and I'm using air quotes, forced to do? Oh, I found the PDF link, uh, TMH, to the uh, questions for the 2020 census. Okay. No, I'll put it in the chat. Okay, cool. Thank you. What do you think could potentially happen? There, there's already, there is already a call. You gotta realize that the government does everything. They pre-plan years. They pre-plan hundreds of years of hey, ahead. How long have we been hearing about immigration reform? How long have we been hearing about immigration reform? We've been, I've been hearing about immigration reform since the 70s. We were mm -hmm. in 2019. Don't you mm -hmm. think they're putting stuff in place so in the event there is some up upheaval, who are they going to blame? Immigrants. Let me ask you this question. If you are declassified as an African American, or you're classified as black, black has no standing in law. And then they lump you with an African American. Because they say African American, aka black. They use. Also the, has no standing in law. They use these terms interchangeably. So if you're classified as African American and or black, or let's just say you write in, and this is not a shot, so please, 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 please help me. Please help me with this. You write in either more autochthonous, Aboriginal. Okay. Any, anything that is not denoted as a choice where you can prove who you are, fill in the blank. So this is not a shot. And they decide they're going to institute a hard line immigration reform and all those who cannot prove who they are will be deported. What do you think is going to happen? I hope you African Americans got that dual citizenship. What do you think is going to happen? Immigration. If you say, if you claim autochthonous, if you claim Aboriginal, if you claim indigenous, the number one question they're going to claim, they're going to say is indigenous to where? Autochthonous from who? Who do you trace back to? Well, I'm autochthonous or I'm indigenous to America. Uh, no slash. Are you talking about North America? Central America? Or are you talking about South America? Because all of that's America. And right undrip now. and age rip and undrip and age rip will not work. Despite what people try to tell you, they Hold miss up. the point to read to where America does not honor it. It is not law here. You because America, it. the Indian in America already has in the, they have reservations, casinos, they have a self sufficient system set up already. So it does not apply here. Read further into it. The United States does not honor it. It's not law here. And 
and, and even from, when you read it, and mm-hmm. even when you read it, the first line lets you know that it's a trick. It's for the it's the Indigenous People Act of where? What Indigenous people? What's their name? Only indigenous people I know that get classified over here still as the aboriginals or what? The Matisse? Yep. And they're in Canada. So you might end up in Canada if you're lucky. If. Yes. If you're lucky. The government might make you an offer you can't refuse. We'll refi- we'll, 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 <laughs> well, by that time, it won't, it won't be, you, it won't be, uh, you know, negotiation. It'll be, this is where you're going. They've done it before. You don't, ha- as somebody that's private military, this is one thing I can promise you. I don't care what group or organization you belong to, you do not have a big enough army. I promise you, you don't. You do not have a big enough army. My thing is this. Why even attempt that when you don't even have to go that route? But you know there's going to be people talking smack, Bones. You know how people do. It's, see, it's easy to talk smack on the internet when you're behind an icon, when you ain't never had your door kicked in by the ATF, FBI, CIA, or one of the alphabet boys at 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning. See, you anybody can... In, a, in what we call, in what is known as a sterile environment, you can talk all the smack you want until somebody kick your door in. Then you don't. Then it don't matter. <clears throat> you can't call your lawyer. You can't do nothing. They 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 escorting you out in whatever you got on when you get in that bed. See, anybody can talk that smack until they until they had an AK pointed their head, until they had a nine pointed their head, and people are yelling at them. And throwing them all which way all over the place and slapping them, slapping them iron braces on them. Until you've had that happen, you don't know. It ain't nice. So, you know, as as you're sit as we're sitting here comfy and cozy in our abodes right now, with the temperature where we want it to be, being free as we can and are allowed to be. You can you can feel sure you can feel comfortable saying anything you want about the government and the military. But here's one thing I promise you, as somebody that was in the United States Armed Forces back in the 90s, you don't have enough weapons. You don't have a big enough army. And if you have a phone and you have a YouTube account <laughs> and and you've been promoting a drip, undrip. Sovereign citizenship, they already know who you are and they know where you are. And they know what you are. Patriot Act. Don't believe me, look it up. Google is sending your information to wherever they need to send it and they archive everything. That's why we always say, you have to be very careful of what you type in back chats, what you say in Hangouts, because you're being recorded. You can't delete. Just because you delete something in a back chat, it gets archived. I spent 15 years in IT as a systems engineer. That stuff gets backed up automatically. They have forensic software that can pull something off of a hard drive that has been erased up to 20 times. So you can erase your hard drive using a magnet and they can still pull that information off. Don't play. Don't act like you're so smart. You're not. Don't act like you're this renegade special person that has all these powers. You don't. But get away from that TV. But like I said again, that's foolish when you don't even have to do that to achieve your goal. Like LJ Free put out there in the chat, PIH codes. Like we talk about the USDA programs, HUD Section 3. The problem is we are not accessing it. 
And yes, we was we didn't know about it, but we know now. We know now. We know how foreigners come here and built their communities and built cities. We know how. So wouldn't the smartest thing to do is since we are aware of how it was done, use the program since the programs were designed for us in the first place. And the only reason everybody is getting a big jump on us is because they're using it and we're not. So the question becomes, what are we willing to give up? Are we willing to give up these luxuries of this colonized mind to build our communities? Are we willing to let go of what they call trendy and being irresponsible with our finances and where we put it to build our communities? Are we willing to say enough is enough and just start building our communities? Because if we don't do it now, who's going to do it? Grand Rising to Hunga. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna mess up your last name. Um, you have a great point. He says we don't go for segregation. We go for separation. Here, here's here's a challenge with that. And I'm not attacking you. I'm trying. I want to clarify something. Separation. If you understand what it means to separate, you mean you want your own separate from the United States. That's fine. But here is the challenge. Where are you separating to? Because, correct me if I'm wrong, there is no military force other than the United States Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines that is on this soil. So when you we make a declaration, I'm not saying you are, so please don't, don't misunderstand me. When we make a declaration to separate we are declaring war. That's what the United States, that's what the colonies did to Great Britain. They wanted to separate to create their own colonies. They wanted separation from Great Britain to govern themselves. Before they did that, they had to get backing from France and the Romans, AKA the Ottoman Empire, because there was going to be a war. Don't believe you want to govern yourself. You want to be able to govern yourself. Mind your business and realize what that means. We broke down the 501Cs and showed how these nonprofit organizations with their constitutions and how they are constructed basically govern themselves. Take the NFL, for example, which is a nonprofit organization. Do the not Supreme think- Court. Do not take mind your business as a disrespectful phrase, people. Yeah, that's not that's not what we're using it as. Could the Supreme Court overturn what the NFL told Tom Brady? Nope. They wouldn't even entertain it. The highest court in the land could not tell the NFL what to do. And why is that again, TMH? Because they had all of their I's dotted and their T's crossed in the bargaining agreement between the NFL, the National Football League, and the Players Association, which is a union, another 501C, it was agreed that Roger Goodell, who is the commissioner who makes approximately, what, $7.5 million a year, who's hired by the owners, was the arbitrator of the NFL. And because they agreed and they signed on the dotted line, Whatever Roger Goodell decides is what is law is what the law is based on the bylaws of that uh-huh. constitution. Uh huh. Wait a minute. I, I just want I just want to pause for a second. Go Let ahead. Everybody to collect themselves from hearing that if they haven't heard it before. Most of the people in the chat have been here. They know what's going on. But I don't want you to have to repeat that. I just wanted to pause for a second. Go ahead. <laughs> So because of those bylaws and the way that they were written, that the agreement, because it was bargained, it wasn't it wasn't a, a, a unitarian rule or a dictatorship or anything like that. Two entities, nonprofits, came together and agreed that Roger Goodell would have the final say, period, point blank, 
End of discussion. That's the reason why players in the NFL win, even though that they do not get convicted of a crime, they still get punished by the NFL. In Bingo, why you think why you think you can get DUIs, all type of drug charges? <laughs> and they still play football. Exactly. You got people that kill people and they still in the league. Come on. I man. do what I want to do. Because according to the law, right, you cannot be convicted. You cannot be tried and convicted of the same crime. Right. It's called double jeopardy. If you've been acquitted of a crime, right, and presumed innocent, they cannot try you again. Well, that's in United States court. That has nothing to do with bylaws and constitutions of a corporation that has tax exempt status or a corporation that is a for profit. Please do y'all research. Nonprofits are what our ancestors created. For profits are what the colonizers created. They put their system on top of our system and called it indigenous servitude and slavery. Bingo. No way around it. But David Corey, look at it this way. There are agreements in there. Are, <laughs> there are agreements between teams, like there are agreements between the European corporations. You win this week, I win next week. You win this war and take control of this property, I win the next war and take control of that property. And like LJ Free said in the chat, come on relatives, let's don't sit here and catch amnesia like there's not completely independent towns in America, that you have private cities in America. You have nonprofits that have built whole communities they had their own rules and regulations in America. You have foreigners coming over here that can build a Chinatown, a Japanese town, or this town, or that town. <laughs> I was just about to make And we can't do it? No, we not. We got to stop making excuses and just do it. What happened, happened. Okay, we learning what happened so we don't make the same mistakes. But we can't dwell there. With the knowledge that we possess now, we're supposed to make sure we never fall down that rabbit hole again. But now it's supposed to be all hands on deck. Let's start accessing this stuff and get the building. Time is of the essence. And so for the individual that made that comment about the separation, I am not, I was not attacking you. I just, I just, we just need people to understand why you're, for those of you who know the law and know how language is important, specific words in the law can mean you declaring war threatening to separate from the, the United States government, you're basically saying, I'm separating from the United States and every country that they have a treaty with. Please remember that. Yep. If you Don't separate... Forget from, that's a currency count. Oh yeah, everything. Yep. Everything. So if you separate from the United States, I'm not saying you were implying that you were trying to separate, so please don't forget don't misunderstand me. I'm just saying from the terminology of separation, when you separate, you are de- we are, you de- that is a declaration of war. Because you are removing yourself. And, and let's look at it from, let's look at it from the colonizer standpoint. You have the audacity to want to stay on this land and govern yourself and have your own military on this land which will then give another foreign entity the ability to attack you. Because you have now created a hole in their defense. That's like you playing Chattagoda or chess and you have a pawn that goes rogue. If that pawn goes rogue and leaves your queen exposed, boom. They're going to open up airspace just for you. Really? So, I'm saying that so people can understand what it means to have total control of your entity within the United States of America, within the corporation, a.k.a. of the United States of America. The same door that our ancestors were walked out of, were drug out of, were led out of, were forced out of, or even voluntarily walked out of, that door is still wide open. 
They have to leave it open, because how do you think they're walking in? You can have your own... Deep Emma Hall. What was that? No, oh, Emma okay. Hall said, oh, she had to step out to get a day started with just selling a piece. Yeah, yep. so... Peace so, travel. Yeah, safe travels, family. So here's the thing. We gotta... We gotta... Look. You have to realize and accept. You don't have to realize and accept, but just know this. You can look it up if you want to, or not. And we've already done we've already done builds on this. There are cities that actually, like Bone said, there are cities that are sundown cities. You better not be caught dead in those cities, or they will lock you up for speed one mile over the speed limit and hold you until that Monday. And you better have cash. Oh, believe me. Now, theoretically speaking, that could be considered kidnapping, right? Right? No, because these towns got their own constitution and bylaws. Oh. So if the bylaw said that none of none of the uh, none of the magistrates <laughs> work on the weekends, <laughs> and everybody's off. The police off. department closed. Yeah, but everybody off. Police department court, Everybody's off. Oh, we can. So that means you gotta stay locked up, and ain't nothing you can do about it. There, there's there's not a there's not a lawyer, whatever type of lawyer you have that would win that case. If you think I'm playing, look up Lenox, Georgia. I give you the name of the town, Lenox, Georgia. So basically, by all rights and purposes, that town has autonomy. That town has its own sovereign situation. But because the government sees that it's minding its business, the government don't care. So we got to understand what's going on and stop falling for these false narratives and let people label us. And when people say something, make them prove it. Th that's my whole thing. Who told you you were? Moors. Who told you you were Cherokee? Who told you you were Lakota? Who told you you were Dakota? Who told you you were Sioux? Who told you you were Iroquois? Hey, think about it. Don't the so-called wealthy in America live in neighborhoods that police need permission to even go through? Because yeah. they got their own armed um, security? Yeah. Come on, let's not act like this don't exist. Look up micro-nations in America. Under Come the, on, under, man. Under the, um... <laughs> Under the HOAs, Home Associates, what is it, Homeowners Association, they have bylaws and constitutions as well. And your homeowners association can have as much or as little control as 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 the association deems. Y'all know how it is. Tell you what color you're gonna paint your house. Your grass can only be an inch and a half high. Better not be two. And, and, and check this out. And I'm sure that people have noticed for a fact. Don't cut your grass. See what happens. They will put a lean. They will put a lean I'm on your guessing, property. I don't get fined. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> they will put a lean on your property. So let's it, start acting like it can't be done. Let's start acting like the mechanism don't exist. We gotta choose to do it. Ain't nobody gonna do it for us. Why would they do it for us? Because as long as we ain't doing it, they reaping the benefits. Cliff says fence better be eight feet or less because they need to see what you have. Exactly. The Homeowners Association is a body of individuals that live in that area and they decide what's best for their community. If the Homeowners Association decide that there needs to... Now, hey, check this out. Here's the funny thing about it. Before you, before you go purchase a home, make sure you get a copy of the bylaws of that, of that um, constitution the, the Constitution and Bylaws of the, um, the, the, the Homeowners Association. And it will say in fine print at the bottom that they have the right to change these bylaws at any time. And I say that because of what I'm going to say next. So let's just say you, you were in your Homeowners Association and, and you know things are going well. They decide, meaning the Homeowners Association, who votes normally on Wednesdays around 12 o'clock when they know most people at work can't hint, wink, wink. They decide that they're going to Get a police, to get a security team to protect their community, right? 
So one, your fees are going to increase. Two, you now must place a certain type of alarm, which they chose, on your house. And if you don't, you will get fined. Because you signed that contract for that mortgage under that housing association authority, you could actually lose your house if you don't agree to do that. Because you had the right to vote, you had the right to make your make your say and, and state your claim. You had the right to run for office, and you chose to do none of that. Does that or does that not sound familiar? <laughs> I'm just saying. If you don't participate, it's very it's very hard for anybody to have sympathy for you when you become a victim of your non-participation. So, how's everybody out there doing? Bones, you want to wrap up the, um, the, uh, these Berbers, these, these recessive <laughs> Berbers, the, the, the Kabali, put it in a nice little bow so we can get a better understanding and understanding, understanding of who these people are and what they do and what they represent? Yeah, basically, if you study more into the Kabbalah, you'll realize you have a majority of them that are blonde hair, light-eyed, blonde beards, that you would call them white by looking at them, but they're not. Even if you look at the link and you look at the pictures of a lot of these people, they range from different shades to the lightest of light, to the darkest of dark. And not to mention, they're the people that were living in North Africa, or well, the place called North Africa. So if you, and we know the Berbers got snatched up in trade, as slaves, a lot of them did. So would that be your African slaves? I mean... It could be viewed that way, right? Just a question we're asking. There's records showing that all this happened. It's dated and proven. There's no records that showed that we came on no boat yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm at what? Early 1800s on um, majority of my, my lines and um, late 1700s on one line. And yeah, I haven't come across any slaves. I have come across a fifth generation great uncle who came here from Scandinavia. He has a what is equivalent to a passport, but I haven't come across any Africans. I haven't come across any slaves. We didn't we didn't own any slaves. We own property, but we didn't own any slaves. We didn't have any indigenous service. Now, when I looked on the census, you know, between the um you know, between the um late eighteen hundreds and early eighteen hundreds, I saw people who did own that had indigenous service or had people that were working for them and they had actually whole families that were working for them, but they weren't they weren't called slaves. And I'm not saying that they didn't have slaves, I'm just saying from my research, doing my genealogy, the genealogy of other people that I'm helping, we haven't found any slaves. We haven't found any Africans. So that's just been my experience. Your experience might be different. But what you can't do is tell me where my family from when I can prove where they're from. They're from here. So I can't tell you where you're from. Please don't try to tell me where I'm from. And people should have a from. better understanding on what a more really is now that are originated from the people of Maghrib, later on referred to all Arabs, then later on referred to all Muslims, then they added Jews. Over time, they added different things, and then somewhere down the line, it had something to do with color. But that's not what it originated from. You must go to the origin to get the true definition. Yeah, at the end of the day, when and we need to do this with one another. 
that when someone says they're such and such and so and so, and we can do this respectfully, so I'm not saying being disrespectful. What language is that from? If someone says I'm I'm Cherokee, okay, what language is that from? I don't know. Don't you think it'd be good for you to research that? Because it could be French. And if it's French, are you do you have French ancestry in your family? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude, James, stupid. Uh, no he's one he's... in your family came over on a ship wearing a sweatband on his head and a dress shirt. That's a question, TMH. Yeah, yeah, nobody, nah, nobody in my family. I, you know, I don't have a lot of pictures of my ancestors, but I have pictures, some pictures, and no, 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 don't have any sweatbands and head, sweatbands and dress shirts on. No. <laughs> Playing basketball at the office. I get it. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we, we, we need to question everything and everybody, even our own, even our own relatives, man. Don't just, don't just accept being Catawba. Don't just accept being Tuscarora. Don't just accept being Choctaw. Who called you that? Where did that come from? What language is that? We need to know. I, I feel, in my personal humble opinion, I feel we need to know because what that does is that unlocks doors and can't nobody tell you anything. Think about this, if somebody tells you, if somebody were trying to tell me that I'm African, right? And I sit there and I show them my genealogy. And I tell them that both sides of my family go all the way back to Catabasu, Catabasupani. In two counties of North Carolina that trace back to Issa, which trace back to Issa, and the language that we spoke was too low. What they gonna tell me? Can't tell you nothing. What can they tell me? Well, you got African in your family. How? When, when my name is on the rolls. How? See, that's the dip. See, that's how the Europeans can do it. They can trace their geneal genealogy back to when the continents were named something other than what it's named today. That's what we need to do, relatives. Grand Rising, Trab out. Peace, peace. So. Free says, nah, 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 no. Nobody dresses like that unless they're five year old dressing themselves for picture day. <laughs> it's corporate sports. Come on now, it's a culture. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Question is who told you all this? Who? Yeah. So at the end of the day, we need to we need to be able to stand on what we know and not just say it because at the end of the day the Europeans can prove where they're from they can prove where they're from on this side of the continent and they can prove where they're from on the other side of the continent you need to take that question from uh what is it capital one what's in your wallet you need to take that a little bit more serious when they ask that question what's in your wallet who are you? What's normally in a, what's normally in a wallet? Your ID, right? How yep. are you identified? What's in your wallet? They didn't ask you what kind of card you have. They didn't ask you what kind of credit card you have. They said, what's in your wallet? Let's go back. <laughs> Let's go back to the black codes, right? Where's your papers, boy? I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna leave that right there. Free says that you have credit card items in the well. Doodle Vision says, who told you you were African prior to Earth, Wind, and Fire? Mm. Oak Cliff says, who your mama and them? Free says, corporate sports. Let me Google that. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> 
Are you accepting these created titles and names? You're voluntarily accepting indentured servitude. Exactly. That's what you're doing. America is ran on two, on and think, it never left. Slavery never left. The 13th Amendment made it legal. So now it's split it into two forms. You either going to voluntarily work out in society or they going to lock you up or you going to work. Either way, you going to work. They ain't sending these people to prison and they sitting in there. No, they working on these Walmart farms, McDonald's farms. Let's not get this twisted. All it did was split it in two. People who going to voluntarily be indentured servitudes and those who are going to be forced into it by being labeled a felon. Oh, let me do something right quick. I want to look up something right quick. You mean let Keanu? Never mind. I wanted to I want to look up this word. I wanted to look up incarceration. Just to see what the etymology of that word was. So I'm gonna share my screen. So we going we going we're gonna view this together, relatives. Incarceration. Who in the movie The Mexican. Say again. James says, who played in the movie The Mexican? Isn't that Bradley Pitt? I can't remember. Uh, I'm the wrong, you know me, I'm the wrong person that's about some day gonna move it. I'm trying. Look, uh, 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 I was right. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Thank you, Free, for confirming that. James, I'm 100 and 0. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Who played in The Last Samurai? That's Sir Thomas of Cruz. Okay. Incarceration. Fact of being in prison. 1530s from medieval Latin incarceration. Um, incarceration. Nominative incarceration, noun of action from the past participle stem incarcerate to imprison from in paru en carcer prison enclosed space from proto italic which is uncertain origin. It seems best to connect carcer with the IE words for circle from objects such as Latin curvus, Greek ring old norse hingir although not all of these have a good ie etymology the reduplication in latin carcere could be iconic thus the original meaning would have been enclosure the word appears in early english in an absolute medical sense of retention of pus what Hmm. That's what incarceration means. From the word cassette. For circle, round object, ring. Say who played the Prince of Persia? So let me ask Bones. Is there anything that you want to cover before we um let these good people get on with day they Friday and start to enjoy their weekend. Uh, thank you about covering it for today. Okay. There's nothing going on this weekend. 
<laughs> no, we can be still gonna say that. No, we're gonna say that towards the end as we were going out. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, we. Well, okay, we going out now. So. <laughs> yeah. Now we are. <laughs> Man, man. Open the door before we got to the other crowd. Hey, 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 I said, was there anything you want to say before we let these <laughs> good people get out of here? About today's build, I didn't know that's what you meant by let's end the show. I thought I went first. <laughs> no, before, no, I, you know what? I, I understand. I got you. It's Friday. It's all right. It's going to be an interesting post-production meeting. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they always... No, just basically, uh, this Saturday, A2 is basically having a business. Uh, what's the best word for it? A, mm, discussion? I call it a discussion. I mean, it could be a conversation. Yeah, basically a business discussion, conversation for all those who are interested in moving forward and accessing these programs to start now to rebuild our communities. To start, start seeing what skills and what talents we have this business, man, and start putting this on the table. So all who are interested, make sure you uh, email assembly at gmail.com so we can send out the links for this Saturday's conversation. It's time to get the ball moving. No Shiva, more talking. Shiva promised said time. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will gather a time. Uh, yeah, once, uh, once all that'll be in the email. Yeah. When we send the links and stuff out. Yeah, we just got that email from Yeshiva too, also. So we uh, said two and also at the same time. Yeah, we just, we got your email. And 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 for the record, if you associate with scammers and you cool with scammers, don't, oh, yeah. don't, don't call in. I'm sorry. Yeah, you, Do not yeah, call in. We're probably not going to be sending if you, you the if link. You run, if you run it, yeah, if you run it with scammers, and you associating with scammers and you're on their chats and they're not the chats but in their panels bigging them up and braiding their hair and congratulating them for you know whatever you said braiding their hair don't don't <laughs> oh, do not that ain't half bad do not I repeat do not call in because I will embarrass you no, so the first question I'm going to ask you is why are you associating with scammers and you're going to have to answer so if I were you save yourself a headache save yourself some problems and don't call in but yeah, uh, for everyone else who is willing to uh, have a discussion, ask some questions, uh, have a conversation about anything dealing with business improvement and or development, please email us at attentionassembly at gmail.com for the Zoom link to our live call tomorrow. We do not have a time yet, but we will once we gather uh, some more emails. Right. I'm about to cut into somebody's salutation also. You said you're, you're about to cut into some. It's your time for salutation. No, I, no, I was making sure I didn't. I didn't. I just came out of nowhere with the rest of what I was saying. If it's my salutations, then put it on that. Uh, sure this is going down as I said more words than normal. Um, but yeah, peace to the chat. Thanks to the panel for getting up this rising and going live. Appreciate you, doo doo, in the chat. That that sounds weird, James. I'll just say James live for anybody who don't know who that is. James Flame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, uh, links will be in the chat. I'm going to be. He said topics not to be discussed tomorrow: bamboo huts, oldest bones, ice bridges, no pyramid schemes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or no pyramids at all. If you, I mean, you know, no pyramid. We Unless about, you're trying to build it. I don't know. Just it's about what we're doing is what things that people can do today. What can you start today to move forward? History is phenomenal. We have to correct what happened in the past in order for us to be able to build a day so we can have something for tomorrow. But we cannot afford to live in the past and ignore the present and then leave nothing for our, our seven generations. Oak Cliff says no refunds. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. So, again, I want to I want to thank the new subscribers for coming on and um, investing your time. And we do understand and acknowledge that it is an investment. You can spend your time anywhere that you want to. Um, there's 24 hours in a day, so for you to invest your two and a half, three hours 
to come chill with us. We definitely appreciate it and we don't take it lightly. Um, for those in uh, the A2 silent majority, we appreciate you more than you know. Um, hopefully you're starting to subscribe to the forum. I did not check the forum, so if there were some people that signed into the forum, we'll, um, we'll give you a shout out on a conference call on Saturday. Um, without, without that silent majority, the Actors Assembly silent majority, hey man, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have the numbers that we have and they continue to grow because of you, so we thank you. And to the best chat ever, the realest chat ever, the take no crap, chat that we know how to swang them ratchets chat mm. about it about it chat y'all you still got y'all still got name y'all so i'm just saying yo man we we, we appreciate y'all like no other so with that i'm going to turn it over to bones h mccord we're going to take us up out of here and i relinquish the mic oh, i appreciate that tma I'd like to thank tma you no know, sellout for the work they put in on the panel consistently would like to thank the greatest chat ever for not only showing up, but being, but participating and making the growth of A2 possible. We'd like to thank the listeners that don't chime into the chat, but listen to the information and apply it to their daily life. And again, this weekend, we will be having a business discussion. If you're tired of the same old, same old, you're tired of the rhetoric on YouTube, these foolish debates, just hit the number up and let's start building our communities. Let's stop seeing what we don't have and let's start seeing what we do have and how we can improve it let's start applying this stuff now let's show our children a better way so when they become of age they're not starting from the bottom if they'll get to that age of adulthood knowing who they are and having resources to further who they are so on that note it's always fun when we get to kick it with the relatives no place we'd rather be until the next Rising Show, everyone have a very, very blissful day and peace. Peace, y'all.